pressuring a two back set or, or you're bringing a, a blitz to try and stop the run specifically let's talk power and counter what's kind of your go-to um whether it's a line movement or, or pressure or combination of those two things for handling power and counter so there let me start by saying this there are a lot of ways to do this i'm not i'm not going to say my version's the best but it's been the best for me and the most successful for me and where we're different than a lot of people is we don't like to blitz into plays. We like to blitz away from them and slant to the play and let the blitzer off the backside pick up the cutback or the boot. If you think about it, the line and power and counter, they're trying to block you back. So we used to do like slant away from the play, blitz the goth. Yeah, well, you're doing, you know, you're doing their job for them. Yep. You're doing their job for them by slanting away. And what ends up happening is, excuse me, um, and I learned this very early on in 2013, we played a team that was where I used to coach. And they were an I team, and we were running, you know, three technique to the tight end, slant to under, slant weak, bring a guy off the edge. In theory, we were thinking, well, if we slant weak, the backers will be clean, right? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> because they're trying to run power. They're doubling the three technique to the backside linebacker. Well, you know, they don't have to stay on that double for long when you're slanting. So that tackle yep. comes right off and collects that linebacker. And even though your backers are playing over the top, they got an honor weak side run. So they can't be too fast. That, that lever player on their weak side can't be too fast. They picked him. They kicked up. They kicked, uh, kicked the blitzer out got the guard up on the, the scraping backer and they were able to squeeze through. But the following years, and the key to this is when you're slanting to power. And I learned this, I went up to Dick Bumpus's house in 2016. He's the co DC for Gary Patterson for the first 14, whatever years he was the head coach at TCU. He said the whole key is the three technique on the down block from the tackle has to cross face. Because we play a lot of what some people call hard joint spill technique against two backs. Like we have a Sam line, basically we're in overfront with the Sam linebacker, nine technique, who's spilling. And what ends up happening is with that down block, that strong safety up in the line of scrimmage is coming down the line to blow anything up in private field. So they're trying to kick that guy out, kick that guy out, or they're trying to log him and run wide. And then all of a sudden, the six technique loops outside the strong safety. He's been blitzing off the edge or playing tight folds back inside. And now they're running to where you want to go. And what ends up happening is the three technique, they, they have to kick out the three technique. Cause think about it. You're doubling the three. You get the, the down block on the three. He crosses face. So we would get, um, the the fullback trying to kick out the three technique who's crossing face, and then there's a bunch of guys fold back inside they can't get to, yeah. or they can but they're gone. And so we and we've actually hawked it down from the backside. So you because have it, sorry, so you hit the a gap. So he starts to come up inside for the a gap, and he has to start bouncing it. And while he's coming up and starting to bounce, that guy off the backside is coming hard down the line. Yeah, and then he's he the back isn't running away from him. He's got to stop his feet to try and get back outside. He's got to kind of go flat and then that backside player's got to get there. So just, just so I'm getting this right and I can, and I can draw it up for everybody. You'd essentially be like, if you just have the fullback to ends up trying to kick out the end, you'd have the end out end up outside the fullback or would you still spill that? No, he, he's slanting outside. No, we want to, so we want to turn, we don't want to spill because we want the thing to, we're slanting to under. So we want the thing to come back to the blitzer. Yeah. So we want to slant everybody so the boss to cut back into the blitzer. Gotcha. And now, if you did either of those all the time, you'd be in trouble. But if you mix it up, it's very hard. For very, sure. So would, would you have your nose – so like you're aligning it over, would you have your nose cross the center's face then to the Absolutely. field in the slant? Absolutely. Okay. We do that day one anyway. Yeah. But now we're, we're usually in a G and we're crossing the face. Now we're in a shade. We're crossing face. For sure. And, and so then play the cutback because the, the key to the blitz is the three technique having to step around the down block. Yep. And then the other key is the backer, the will has to box it back to the mic 
because if they run weak side power, so the blitzer's coming off the edge, fullback kicks him, the backer spills, and you're spilling to nobody. So the backers have to really play back behind the ball. Okay, so then, so the the this like your six or seven technique, your defensive end, he's going to get outside the fullback. So he's eating up the kick, and the then won't ever get to him because what's going to happen is most of the time the tight end because we're in a six technique will lock on, so they'll just man block. If they go down inside, he'll be outside. But what ends up happening is the thing that 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 screws up the play is you got to think about this: the tight end is going down inside. The three technique crosses face in the tackle. He's stepping hard down inside, and that three. Te- so basically, you get the five and the nine outside the ball. Yeah, there was a couple times where the nine technique could fold back inside because they they couldn't get outside of the five. They're trying to kick yeah, yeah. the five out. He's setting a hard edge. The nine just floating on air, and he kind of wraps back inside. So would you do treat it the same way if you got like eleven personnel? Like it was it was just a fullback. There was no tight end surface. You'd still try and get the three tech outside the double team and cross the face with the nose. I'm not sure about that, um, and you don't really need that because you may lose a blocker. Yeah. So the whole thing is the tight end. You have to get outside, but I probably wouldn't do that as much. Um, I probably would get thicker. On um, I would you know because we have two ways to do it. We can anchor the end in the C and slant the two guys so the three would become a four eye. Yep. And if we're going to do that, if the tackle down blocks, then we just try to ear hold the tackle and shove him backwards mm-hmm. rather than stepping outside around it. Yep. Because now they're down a gap. Yep. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then in terms of counter then, is are you trying to do a similar thing just to the counter, or what's that look like? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you're trying to – we don't need to blitz counter because with an overfront, like if you're talking about two backs – Yep. You – if we're like in our old robber coverage, we outnumber them to the weak side. And if they run counter, nobody can get the mic. Gotcha. Center blocks back on the three. The mic's running, running right off his ass. The G protects them because the, the guard has to block down on the, uh, the guard has to block down on the nose. Yep. Center has to block back on the three. If you run right off the center's ass, you're in the backfield for a TFL. Awesome. Nobody so that's, ran, that's, that's great. Cause it gets you two. You, you're really covering up both. Like most teams that are running power are also running like the other gap schemes, right? They're running counter and, and that helps you on both. Yeah. I mean, 21 person, I mean, 21 personnel is different to me than 11 in terms of counter. Like most people run more, run more counter than power. Yep. Out of 11 and 20 personnel because their fullback isn't that kickout guy anymore. Yeah. He's not going to go ear hole. Uh, I mean, who do you want to, who do you want to trust? For sure. And you know? we see that, we see that a ton. That's like, we see the, the 20, we see the 21 as well, but we see the 20 and the 11 and they're, and they want the guard to be the kickout guy and they yeah. want to let the other back, um, you know, fold through, uh, and, and work as the, as do the puller's job normally. So what would you, any, like, what would be your number one point on handling that then I guess? Cross face on the back block of the three. I mean, cause now that center has to, uh, the center has to block all the way down on the three. Yeah, that's tough. There's a misnomer, I think, in defensive football that if you want to cross face, you need to be closer. I don't think that's the case. The yeah. farther you are away from the center, the easier it is to block back. Yeah. Think about it. If I'm right on the center, if I'm in the shade, I'm right on the guy. He can get hands on me without doing much. Yeah. If I'm a two, a G, a three, if I'm a three, he has to block flat. Yeah. He can't come high on me. If he, if he high walls me, I can run right around him. Yeah, you can go under it. So you got to block real flat. And when you as, block real flat, it's real easy for me to get across. And we As practice. a former center, I completely agree with the it's center. Day one, we teach that. This is not an add-on. This is not a game plan. This is not BS. This is not coach talk or like clinic talk where in February you hear something in a clinic. And you're like, ah, oh, that sounds really good. It'll never work. I'm telling you, 15, 16, 17-year-old guys, we teach day one. Our nose, what do they get? What, is the, what does the G get? Now, I'm not talking about a zero nose. I'm talking about a G. You get a double team both ways, and then you get back and pull. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's others, but the pass set commonly. That's it, and so the, you and you see the back and pull so much, but yeah, that's where power is dead in the eleven twenty stuff. Because think about it, 
you can put the Y in between or the F in between the guard and the tackle. Like Auburn does that a lot. But now that guy's not a vertical threat. Mm-hmm. And really only thing you're getting, the only reason why you'd put that guy in there in between is for an angle on power. That's it. Yeah. What other reason are you going to do it for? Insert plays. Yeah. But the thing is, a lot of that is the element of surprise. So you walk that guy in between the guard and the tackle you're letting everybody know, hey, they're going to run inside now. They're running power. Yeah. You're not running stretch. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's better, to, especially if you're going to use a big-ass tight end. Sorry, I hope I, I didn't. No, you're good. You're using a big-ass tight end. Like, you are you know, you're at Auburn, and that kid's 5'11". He has natural built-in, I call it, instead of calling kids short. I tell them they have nat- natural built-in leverage. You know, you're able to get underneath these monsters from Alabama. And you won't, now you may not drive them back, but you'll get underneath them. Yeah. But all the things that you can do with that guy stacked on the tackle or outside the tackle, it's better to say, hey, we're not going to run power. We're going to run counter. Yeah. You know, and because to run, and there's, there's other, multi, there's, there's a, a whole bunch of issues. There's multiples of issues in here. Like the other issue with power is if you really want to run power, you need to deepen your backup and getting closer so you can run that a gap power. You yeah. can't run it where from where you run zone read. Mm-hmm. And if you do, and if that's your normal alignment, now if you want to release for pass, you got to get wider. So now your your back tell your back sets tip everything. Yeah, you know what I mean. Now you can hide that by lining up the pistol and shifting late. But so now you've tipped off the offense. You've tipped off the defense. We're going to run the football, and so it's better to say hey our big ass tight end who's now a vertical threat and can reach and can, you know, run buck sweep and pin and do all this stuff. Yeah. We lose the effectiveness on power, but let's just run counter, have the guy, the bigger guy kicking out anyway, and mm-hmm. have the bigger guy rapping. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. And Rather that's something that's very common for us. And a, and a fullback trying to kick. So, um, but we get counter. So basically we, when we defend power and counter, we want to get the three techniques to the side of the play. That's really what we're trying to do. And so, you know, path of least resistance is we'll set three technique to where we think they're going to run the ball. And then we'll set the traps. You know, I'm all about being multiple and I'm all about confusing the offense. But when it gets something like power and counter, I want them to know where our three technique is going to be. Yeah. Because now I know how to set up and it's kind of like defending the option. Like, I think there's some merit to putting a three to one side and a G to the other. Because you know you're not only going to get midline to one side and you're only going to get fear to the other. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. They're not going to run counter to the three. I mean, you can, but you'd rather run it to the one. Yeah. And so now you have your stunts and your things to set up. And For so sure. sometimes I think in football it's good to mix and match and slant and blitz and try to confuse them. But I think sometimes it's better to, like, you know, give the rat the cheese. Yeah, you know, know, know what you're going to get so that when you need to know, you know it. Yeah. Come here, come here, come here. And then, boom, here comes the trap. Yeah, no, that's uh, that makes a ton of sense. Last question, and you give me.